it's, it's probably fair to say our, our subject is a, a bit of a statement of the obvious, isn't it? That, that God, the one true God, is, is greatly to be praised. Well, well of course he is. He, he's the one true God. He is unlike any other. And it's a great privilege, isn't it? An immense privilege that, that we are able to come to know and understand that one true God through his word <laughs> and through his creation, for he is, of course, the, the great creator and the great life giver. And to know of his purpose and his hope. And, and it surely is, is a profitable use of our time, isn't it, to, to think deeply on, on what it means to, to give him praise, to give him great praise. We've, we've just read together from that 145th Psalm, to be honest, I had the pick of many, many readings I could have chosen to consider a subject like this, because the scriptures abound, don't they, with, with um, references to, to praise. But it's very easy to appreciate from that reading just, just why God is described as greatly to be praised. There are so many different things we could pick out and home in on to give credence to this fact. In, in that one psalm alone, we've, we've read of his, of his fame amongst men, of his, his grace, his mercy, his compassion. We've read of his goodness. We've read of his, his kingdom, that everlasting kingdom. We've read of his providence, how he upholds all those that fall. We've read of his righteousness and of his holiness. There are many, many reasons, aren't there, why this one true God we are so privileged to know is greatly to be praised. And, and that is, of course, um, a, a, an instruction, a comment that comes straight from Scripture. We find the phrase greatly to be praised um, four times, in the, in the King James at least. Um, and uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 25, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Psalm 48, verse 1, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Psalm 96, 4, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And then in that psalm we just read together, Psalm 145, verse 3, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. So it's, 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 we're left under no doubt, are we, that, that this, this God is to be greatly praised. And, and we have in each of those references, of course, a reference to God as great. This declaration to praise him is, is, is clearly not without merit, is it? Now, when we think of what it means to, to praise, um, it, it, it's a word we find a lot of times in the scripture, but as we'll all appreciate, of course, there are um, in the originals sometimes different words used and translated in the same way. Um, and uh, I think it might just be worth picking out some of the terms, that, the more common terms that are used, and just appreciating a little bit more um, their, their, their meaning and their context, because we start to get a bit of a sense as to um, the, the scope um, of, of, of praise and, and what is meant when we, when we read of it. There are many, many variations, many, many words we could pick out. We just want to focus on some key ones. Um, starting in the Hebrew, um, there's a couple of terms that are commonly translated um, praise. We have um, halal, um, which means to, to shine or to boast, and that's the most, most common. 165 times we, we have it translated as such. Um, and, and a word sort of uh, descended from that, tilar, which means a song of praise, a, a hymn. Um, it's only ever translated as praise, in fact, but that, that appears a further 57 times. So we sort of have a sense with this expression of, of clearly and markedly um, expressing to others, of, of wanting to be heard, of, of, of a sense of prominence. And, and we get our word hallelujah um, from, from, this, from this term, um, praise be to Yah. We then have a, another term, yordor, uh, which means to, to throw or, or to cast uh, to confess, to bemoan, to, to stretch out the hand. Um, and, and that's, you know, translated as praise. It's also translated as, as thanks and, and, and confess. And again, a, a related word, uh, tordor, uh, which means an extension of the hand, a confession. 
um, and that's, uh, that's a further 114 times. So your door is 114 times and, and, and Todor is, is a further 32. So again, these are two terms used extensively. And in both of these terms, we, we find that, that, that within those words, that, that the word yord, which is the Hebrew for hands. And, you know, we, we express ourselves a lot, um, don't we, via our hands. We have this involvement of the hands in, in this, um, this reference to, to praise as, you know, and its various meanings of throwing and casting it. They all involve the hand, don't they? And finally, in the Hebrew, we have, have the word zaymar, um, which, which means to, to sing praise, to make music, uh, to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument, or to play it, um, which, which appears 46 times. So we've got a real sense of, of music um, uh, being involved here. Um, and uh, and it's, as well as praise, it's translated as psalms or, or sing or, or sing forth. And then finally, uh, a term there, which is only actually translated praise a couple of times, um, barak, it, it means to kneel or, or to bless. Um, it is trans it is, does appear 330 times in total, so it's a very common word, um, only partially translated praise, but as we'll see, it, it, it's a kind of an important um, related term to, 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 to praise. And then just moving on to the Greek, a um, couple of terms here, um, anio or anos, which means to praise, um, to extol, to sing praises in honour to God. Um, and, and the related term there, epanio or epanios, which means to applaud. Um, the, we don't actually get as many references in, 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 uh, in the New Testament as we, as we do in the Old. Um, and then finally, doxa, uh, which again is, is only translated praise a, a handful of times. It's mostly translated as glory. Um, and it's from the root word dokio, which actually means to think. So we've just whisked through a few definitions there. We don't want to dwell too long on them, but what hopefully we've just drawn out from that, that, that brief word study is, is that there are a number of kind of ideas and concepts wrapped up in the terms that we, we commonly read about um, when, when we come across praise in the scripture. There's a, there's a number of ideas that we can perhaps try and unwrap and explore a bit further um, throughout our remarks. Perhaps before we do so, we just want to spend a few moments just reflecting on, on, on why praise is important. I mean, we, we've kind of mentioned that, you know, it, it's kind of obvious that we should praise God given his greatness. Um, but but why, why is it particularly important that we do so? You know, why can't we just um, acknowledge it and move on with our lives? Well, why, why is praise an important thing to do? Well, the first one is, is, is what we've already said, really, that, it, that it's deserved, isn't it? Psalm, Psalm 29 uh, verses 1 and 2, given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. It's, it's deserved, isn't it? It's deserved that we give God that praise for he is great. It gives God pleasure. Let's, uh, we should be in Psalm 145. Let's just look forward at Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. And it's interesting to kind of note the way that's expressed. It, it doesn't say, um, um, praise God, because he likes it. It says it's good to praise God, but it's kind of up to you whether you choose to or not. Do we want to, to give God pleasure? Do we want to, to please him? Does it come from our hearts with a sincerity? Or does it come by rote because we're told to? Of course, it's calling on the former. It's, it's a form of expression. It's a form of, of self-expression, isn't it, praise? Let's go to Proverbs 15. <clears throat> and verse 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. And, and when you think about it, how, how often have we, uh, have you maybe hummed or, or whistled to yourself as, you, as you've gone about your day or as you've been doing something? Um, and, and then how often have you done that whilst feeling gloomy? If you're feeling a bit down, if maybe physically ill or, or maybe there's something just getting to you, how inclined are you to hum a little ditty? Probably, probably less so. Pr praise is kind of the, it's the outward expression, isn't it, of, of an inward feeling. It's, it's an insight into our hearts 
and our state of mind. The way we express ourselves externally, as we've seen in that proverb, is a reflection of, of how we feel inside. And so praise gives us an opportunity to, to express how we feel, to show to, to God and to others how we feel. And then finally, um, in this respect, um, praise is important because there's a limited window in which it can be undertaken. Let's, uh, let's just, uh, I'll, I'll skim through a couple of verses, we'll be familiar with them. Isaiah 38, the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. Psalm 88 verse 10, wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Psalm 115, 17, the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. And, and, and there's others as well. And, and we, we know that, don't we? That, that actually, from the grave, we have, have no opportunity to praise our Father, to praise the one true God. So it's important to act upon opportunities to praise him whilst we can, before those opportunities are withdrawn. So let's, let's build, a, build a picture of, of, of what praise is all about and, and consider some aspects of it. And many of these, you know, they're going to be familiar to us, I'm sure, but, but I think it's important to try and have a holistic look at it and to, to, to draw these things together and to relate them because it, it is important if we are to be effective in our, in our praise to God, if we are to give him great praise, that, that, that we incorporate these various aspects of praise. Praise is, is, is all-inclusive. It, it, it's a universal, um, has a universal relevance. Uh, we, we, we read a, a, of that a bit in the reading that we, we had, but let's go to Psalm 103, um, just for a couple of other verses. Psalm 103 and, and verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And, and how does the psalm, uh, how do the psalms end? What's the final verse of the book of Psalms? Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And we, we sang about that, didn't we, in our, in our opening hymn. This is something that, that no matter what our, our situation, our background, our, our circumstances, we are all instructed to, to, give, uh, to give praise to God because, because he is greater than, than all. So it's, it's all-encompassing. Nobody is um, outside the scope of these things. Well, of course, one of the first things that perhaps comes to mind when we consider praise is, is that of song, and we've alluded to it already and uh, it's, it's perhaps one of the most fitting ways in which we we can praise God we have um, out of the sort of 307 I think it is references to praise in scripture we have 185 of them that's about 60 percent just in the book of Psalms which is of course a book of song we, we find praise used in, in, in musical form on, on many different occasions we find it in the lives of, of David Hezekiah of Moses we're probably familiar with the, the block of Psalms, Psalm 113 to, to 118, which are termed the Hallel Psalms. That's that word we, we saw earlier, wasn't it? Hallel Psalms. And, and these are sort of recited as a unit by, by observant Jews on, on their Jewish holidays. Um, and typically you have Psalm 113 and 114 are sung at the, at the beginning of the Passover, um, and then Psalms 115 to 118 are sung at the end of, of, of the Passover meal. And it's quite likely that the hymn that the, the disciples sang with Christ prior to going out to the Mount of Olives was, was, um, was from that, that, that section of the Psalms. Psalm 136 um, is, is, is known as the Great Hallel. That's that psalm, um, I'm sure we know, that, that has that repeated refrain, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And that term thanks is that word yordor. Give thanks, give praise unto the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And it's repeated in each verse of that psalm. So a great refrain. 
for his mercy, for his, his steadfast love endureth forever. Great, great praise. And then towards the end of the Psalms, um, the, the last section, the last few Psalms, we have a, a really disproportionate number of, of references, don't we, in those, in those final Psalms, 145 to 150. And it's interesting, as we, as we work our way through the, the, the back, of, back end of the, of the book of Psalms, we, we sort of have this, um, uh, the earlier Psalms, um, the early 140s, sort of recount the challenges in David's life, his, his pleas for help. And then it starts to talk about praising um, God on, on a personal level. And then we get, as we read through the Psalms, this increased intensity, this crescendo, culminating in the call for, for constant and, and worldwide praise for the creator in that final verse, that everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And as we, as we read through those psalms, we really get this sense of a, a crescendo of, of praise and of, 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 of um, thanks to God, all reflected through, through the, the musical uh, nature of, of the psalms. So it's, it's, a very, it's a very powerful way to praise uh, God, isn't it? And uh, of course, if we come to the New Testament and to Colossians chapter 3, um, we, we find, find um, words to, to that effect. Colossians 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Grace, charis, thankfulness. It's that same idea, isn't it? We're told to, to sing regularly, but to sing from the heart. It's got to be sincere. It's got to come from our heart. Which is the important thing, isn't it? We're not singing to perform. We're not singing to demonstrate our musical ability and our musical talent. It, it doesn't matter really what comes out of our mouth in terms of its, its musical accuracy. Um, it, it, it's what comes from the heart that, that, that really matters. And it's important, isn't it, when we, when we sing our praise, when we sing our hymns, when we sing praise in, in other forms, to, to make sure that we, we are thinking of and, and appreciating what it is that we're singing. If we're just singing because the words are there and it's what we always do before the prayer at the beginning of the meeting and it'll be over in a minute and I can sit down, is that praise? Is that showing thankfulness to God? Does it give him pleasure just, just doing it by rote like that? Do we have that, that, that grace, that thankfulness in our hearts whilst we're engaging in that praise? It's interesting as well, we have that, that association in that verse with, with teaching and admonishing one another. And um, just um, back a couple of pages in, in Ephesians 5, obviously Ephesians is, is a very um, similar account. And in Ephesians 5 and verse 19, we have the, the, the equivalent sentiment. And it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. So the same, same sentiment. But, but that speaking to yourselves, or as, as, as modern translations put it, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Do we do that? It's, it's interesting. I, I, I don't quite know exactly what, what, what the expectation is there, but, but, but do we communicate with each other through, 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 through psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs? How, how, how do we do that? Do we, do we appreciate fully when, we, when we're singing the, the communal aspects of it, that it's not just um, us as, as, as individuals, but there's a sense of, of speaking to one another in, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There's a really important community element to this as well, isn't there? And I'm, there's, there, 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 there surely is, is, is food for thought there. Well, we just alluded to this, but of course, gratitude... Thankfulness is, 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 is an important aspect of praise, isn't it? Singing with, with thankfulness in our hearts, we just read. Um, and and that, that, that there has to be this constant element of thankfulness, isn't there? An appreciation and, and, and gratitude to our praise. And that, that's something to, to, to always be 
conscious of because there's, there's, there's plenty of, 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 of um, literature and, 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 and song and, and music um, out there in the, in the, in the wider Christian uh, Christian world but 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 what sentiments do, do some of those words express what, what what are they all about are they are they giving God that honor and that thankfulness or, or are they more focused upon upon ourselves in everything give thanks says the Apostle Paul in, in 1 Thessalonians Psalm 147 says, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. It, it's really important, isn't it, that, that at all times we are reflecting our appreciation of God as the provider of all things and acknowledging him with thanks in our praise. Praise needs to be visible. Let's go to the book of Psalms again, and this time Psalm 40. Sorry, there's a, there's a lot of flitting around of, of references, but um, it's such a, a, a widely covered topic, it's, it's difficult not to. Psalm 40 and, and verse 10. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. We're not to keep these, these things to ourselves, are we? The, the, the expression of God's righteousness, of his holiness, of his loving kindness. But then they're not things to, to keep quiet and keep to ourselves. They're things we want to um, make sure that others are aware of. Remember that, that first term, halal, it has a sense of to boast. You know, boasting is about telling other people what wonderful thing we've got. And oftentimes it's, it's, it's obviously, it's about us as individuals being, being um, uh, focused on ourselves, that's not the kind of boasting we're, we're talking about, is it? It's, it's about telling others of this wonderful thing that, that we want to share with them. We want them to, to share in these things, to hear of the wonders of God. Now, of course, there's a, there's, a, there's a strong health warning with this, isn't there? Because cause we need to be careful that the motivation is, is right, that we, we don't allow that to, to be distorted so that it becomes pharisaical. You know, we're not going around saying, look at me, what a wonderful person I am at giving praise. Listen to my wonderful praise. It's, it's not about that, is it? But how do we convey to others through our praise of, of the wonders of God, that this wonderful hope that we have, how do we share it and make it manifest to others? Because praise is, isn't something that we... Well, we can do it by ourselves, of course we can, but there is that important communal aspect we, we, we alluded to already, a, a social aspect. I'm just go back a couple of Psalms, Psalm 34. Psalm 34 and, and verse 3. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And then Psalm 35 and verse 18. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. It's something that we do. It brings us together as a community. It's not about us as, as individuals, although, of course, we, we always have those, those opportunities and those moments to have private and personal prayer and, and praise to our Father. But, but this is something that, that binds us together, isn't it? It's something we do together as a community, and it's something that we should always seek to find ways to convey to those who maybe haven't yet appreciated the wonders that we share to um, try and instill in them an interest and an acceptance um, to, to, to join with us. Praise is something that, that, that is not for a set period of time that we do at a point in our lives or at a particular point in, 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 in time and, and then um, forget about. It, it's something that should happen constantly. Um, later in Psalm 35 uh, and uh, verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad that favour my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. All day long. This isn't something that we, we just do um, on, on a Sunday or, or, or at a set point in the day. This is something that should be sort of dripping off our lips at every, every opportunity to be continually seeking to give praise to God all the day long. Prayer is very similar, isn't it, in terms of the, the characteristics we've referred to. We could be talking about 
prayer in many ways, couldn't we? It's, it's, it's integrally linked to praise. There's this, this element of prayer in, in our praise, isn't there? Um, uh, Colossians 1, verse 3, I'll, I'll read it. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. It's quite a common introduction to, to the epistles, isn't it? This, this, this prayer for them, uh, coupled with thanks. So, so kind of prayer and, and expressions of thanks and of gratitude, which, which we've seen praise is, is all about, that they go together. And there's similar things said about prayer, pray without ceasing. Um, it's interesting, if we just go to the book of Exodus and, and chapter 30. We find a record of the, um, the time that the, um, the incense was being composed. And we read in verse 34 of Exodus 30, The Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stacti and onica and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. So incense, which we, we can link with prayer, can't we? Is, 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 is a mixture of ingredients that blend together perfectly and are, are unique and dedicated to God and, and not for, for misuse. And, and, and prayer's like that, isn't it? In that it, it composes of multiple things. And, and praise is one of those. We might also have thanksgiving and, and, and petitions and, and intercession, all these aspects of prayer that, that kind of blend together into this beautiful, sweet perfume. And as far as our subject tonight is concerned, praise is an important part of that, isn't it? And, and, and as, we, as we sing the words to our hymns, you know, they're, they're words commonly that are, that are addressed to God. So it's important when we're singing that, that, that we're, we're of the mindset that we're praying, because that's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? It's, it's, not, it's not something that we, that we, again, just do because it's there in front of us. It, it, it should, we should be thinking about it and approaching it as if we're giving a prayer. We focus on quite a lot of, um, a sort of positive and uplifting um, aspects, but, but there's confession as well, which is perhaps not something that makes us feel quite so, quite so great, but it's an, another important aspect of prayer. Um, Psalm 28, sorry, Proverbs 28, and verse 13. Proverbs twenty-eight, thirteen: He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That term confesseth there is, is the word yodor, that one we saw, um, related to hands. And you know, we have a modern phrase, don't we? Hold your hand up to something. That was me. I did that, sorry. And, and we saw that term commonly translated as, as praise. There's a, there's a connection, isn't there, between this, this, this expression, this, this recognition of, 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 our, of our sins and of our misdemeanours. And, and through praise, through our praise, we, we have the opportunity to to confess those before God and, and to receive, receive his mercy. And we think of the Psalms, don't we, that David wrote, the Psalms at his darkest moments, when he had a broken and a contrite heart. Those, those were Psalms of, of confession, weren't they? A form of praise focused on that occasion, on, on the things that he, he felt bad about, that he'd done wrong. But through that praise, confessing them before God and finding his mercy as a result, because the alternative, the covering of those sins, we're told clearly, leads to, to um, it's a dead end, it shall not prosper.
we've sort of alluded to recognition uh, already when we spoke about how praise praise was deserved praise is deserved to god but 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 it's it's, it's important isn't it that that we we do recognize that that omnipotence of god and and his memorial name whilst also showing humility and deference remember that term that term barak which was mostly translated blessed but but a couple of times praise and and we see it sort of side by side in the psalms don't we with with praise it's 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 got that that the meaning of kneeling and you sort of you can imagine you, know, you get the sense of the, the deference before god recognizing that he is the one true god and, and and we are not and quite frankly we are undeserving of any of his goodness but deeply grateful when we receive it we we recognize his purpose don't we in our praise his purpose to to fill the earth with those who will glorify him <clears throat> psalm 72 has has some wonderful sentiments in doesn't it psalm 72 a a psalm a, a song that's, that's described um, as, uh, as the prayers of David, again, linking these things together. But Psalm 72 and verse 17, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. Recognising that, that, that purpose of God, that wonderful future. And we don't wait until that future, do we, to, to attempt to give God the glory. We know the day will come when God will be glorified without the flesh getting in the way. And we pray earnestly that we might participate in that. We don't have to wait for that day, do we, to try and give God the glory. We, we do so now. We, we recognise that purpose. We, we call upon God to fulfil it. And we, we do all of this through our praise, like David there. Praise gives us an opportunity, again, it's linked to some of the things we've said, but to, to highlight a contrast. <coughs> a contrast between God and man we've talked about god's greatness we've recognized his purpose and his memorial name but but we recognize don't we that that no flesh should glory in his presence praise like that incense is is for god and god alone and by expressing our praise we remind god how aware we are that 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 we cannot glory in ourselves only he can receive it We mentioned again a bit earlier about the, 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 the more positive elements that we were focusing on. And positivity is, is an important thing to, to appreciate with, with praise, isn't it? It's a really important thing to appreciate. If we go back in uh, Psalm, to Psalm 57. We find from the title of the psalm that this was a psalm of David when he fled from Saul in the caves. That's not great, right? It's not, not a very positive moment, not, not something to be cheery about. He was fleeing for his life. He, he didn't quite know what was going to happen next. And in the early verses of that, of that psalm, you know, he, he's, he's, he's calling on God for mercy. He, he wants a refuge um, because, you know, his soul, verse 4, was among lions. He lay even among them that are set on fire. Things, things were really, really uncomfortable for him. But then verse 7, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Wake up, my glory, awake, sultry and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Remember when I asked if, how often we hum a ditty whilst we're down, you know, David was down, and yet he managed to find it in himself to praise God in this really uplifting way because he saw the positivity he could draw from that. His heart was fixed on it, and he turned a, a dark and difficult situation into something that he could be positive about and draw great strength and comfort from it. And it, it's, it's easy to say this, and sometimes at our, our hardest moments so easy to forget it. 
because sometimes we get lulled into apathy, don't we? We stew ourselves in doom and gloom. We get focused and worried on things in our lives. And it's so easy to forget that we have the solution to that, that negative feeling right in our hands. We can turn to the word of God. We can approach him in prayer and in praise. If David could overcome his darkest moments through his praise, then, then what can we fail to overcome? And just as another example, we might think of Paul and Silas in prison. They sang a hymn, didn't they? They didn't sit there fretting powerful source of positivity at difficult moments isn't it okay so um just before we we, we wrap our remarks up we just want to sort of work through um uh, 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 an incident just to kind of see some of these characteristics characteristics in action and just draw a couple of further points out let's let's go on to psalm 105 And reading from the beginning of that psalm, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his marvellous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. And then he goes on in the psalm to recap works um, from the likes of Abraham and Isaac and and Jacob and and Moses. And and just in that small section at the beginning there, what did we see? We, We had gratitude, we had singing, we had visible boasting of his works to others. We had positivity, we had recognition, many of those those characteristics that we've we've drawn on. What's the context of this psalm? It's, 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 we find the source of it, don't we, in, in, in 1 Chronicles um, 16. Because context is, is really valuable, isn't it, to, to, to appreciate the context of these words. And in 1 Chronicles 16, we have in verse 7 the psalm that David first delivered to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. And then the... the, the, the in 1 Chronicles 16, it goes on to recount the words we find in Psalm 105, along with, along with some from 96. And of course, 1 Chronicles 16 was one of those passages we had on the screen right at the beginning, because in verse 25, we have the phrase, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And what was happening here? Well, the early verses of the chapter 1 Chron 16 explained to us that, that David was, was bringing the ark back from, from Obed-Edom, wasn't he? He was bringing the ark back, and he was... Um, uh, delivered this psalm to, to, to Asaph and, and his brethren and, and, and all of the sentiments expressed in that psalm come at this time of great celebration for God had retur- restored the ark to their midst. Just interesting to note, as part of this little incident, beginning of the chapter 1 Chron 16, they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he proceeded to share some food with them and, and, and uh, led to the psalm. And it's interesting to note the, um, the, 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 the use here of, of, of peace offerings. As I'm sure we know, there are three kinds of peace offering. You have the, the vow, the, the, the voluntary or, or free will, um, and then you have the, the thanksgiving peace offering. And that thanksgiving is, 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 is todor or, or yordor, uh, the outstretched hand. So we have a link in that type of peace offering, the thanksgiving peace offering in, in Leviticus 7, which we, we won't go to. We have a link to praise, the use of the hands in this expression of thanksgiving. And, and peace offerings, that they, they are they're willing sacrifices, aren't they? That, that, that are chosen by, by the individual to be offered in recognition of God's omnipotence. That's what was happening at this point in time. All of the sentiments in, 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 the, in the psalm expressed through praise were, were complemented by these peace offerings. And, and the, the thing that makes the peace offering unique is that sense of, 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 of choice. Unlike the sin offerings, which you were commanded to do in certain situations, they came about because of sin, and touching the unclean thing, and, and swearing, and lies and deceit, and all those different things where they, they were, requi- were required to, to offer a sin offering. With the peace offerings, they were voluntary. 
no obligation unless you choose to. And so we find actually there's, there's a strong synergy here, isn't there, with these peace offerings to, um, to, the, um, to praise, to the things we've been considering. The, 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 the willingness, the desire to offer a peace offering, to show thanksgiving to God, to, to vow and, and express our commitment to him through these peace offerings. And so really, sacrifice is, is another element of, of praise, we could say. But actually, if we're to praise God effectively, we have to think of these characteristics and these, these um, aspects of praise and, and see how embedded they are in our lives. Do we complement that praise with willing sacrifice? Are we living sacrifices to God? Because if, if we don't, if, if, if our lives bear no reflection of this at all, if we, if we just do the things that we're told to do, a bit like the sin offerings, and we don't have those peace offerings to complement them, then isn't all that praise kind of hollow? Isn't it just lip service? Does it really mean anything if it's not complemented in that way? One final thing we'd just like to draw from this account of, uh, of David restoring the ark. We've seen the, 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 the links to, um, between praise and sacrifice. Um, we want to just turn to a third reference, though, because um, this time we want to look at the parallel record in, in 2 Samuel 6. Um, and just remind ourselves of something else David did as part of these events. Um, going in towards the end of verse 12, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they, had, they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. In verse 15, David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. And, and in verse 16, Michael looks out and he saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And, and she despised him and, and, and we kind of know, know the events. We've got some really raw emotion here, haven't we, of David leaping. You know, the king of Israel leaping and dancing in a way that, that, that could be interpreted as, as bringing shame on him. Certainly by those who, who didn't appreciate what was behind that expression. And when you think about, the, about praise, and we, we've seen there's, there's, a, there's a lot of references in the Old Testament, we, we associate praise heavily, don't we, with, with the Jews, and we think about um, uh, many instances of, of them engaging in praise. Um, it's, it's part of their fabric to, 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 to have praise. Um, with the Christ, Christians, uh, perhaps, perhaps less so. Perhaps, um, other than perhaps the, the evangelical and Pentecostal wing, perhaps there's a, there's a more of a sense of reservation and, 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 and structure to, to the way they go about their praise. Um, now, I'm not sitting here suggesting that we should all think about being happy clappy, but there is perhaps food for thought as to, you know, whether we, whether we truly are able to reflect in our own way, whatever that might be, that sense of raw appreciation like David did. I'm not suggesting you should all skip and leap your way out of the, uh, uh, the Bible class tonight, although if you did, I'd be quite chuffed you'd like the address. Um, but, 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 but what is it that, that, that we can um, do to, 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 to express ourselves appropriately? Think of all those references to your door, the, the use of the hands. And how often do we use our hands in forms of celebration? The fist pump, the clapping, hugs to show how we care for somebody. We, we use them a lot, don't we, in day-to-day -day lives? How, how do we use them in our praise? Do we, do we stand there with our hymn book and one hand in our pocket? You know, I don't, I'm not making any suggestions, but it, I feel like there's food for thought there as to how we, how we express ourselves in an appropriate fashion um, when, we're, when we're engaging in our, in our praise. Because it happens, doesn't it, in, 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 in other cultures and, and, and throughout the scriptures. We, we see these people who aren't, aren't afraid to express, their, express themselves. And um, as I say, I'm, I'm not suggesting any particular behaviours, I'm not trying to condone any particular activities, you're not going to see me um, leaping around the room, I'm going to promise you. Um, but, but, but there's got to be something to think about there, hasn't there? There's got to be something to think about.
There are plenty of examples throughout the scriptures where we sort of get a sense of mass public praise, where the whole congregation comes together. We've just seen one, haven't we, in, in this passage. But all too often, in most cases, in fact, what happens, the moment passes and, and the people engaged in that praise fell away. How many times did Israel fall away from, from God? Despite these high points in their history, they, they fell away. They turned to other gods. And that, that moment of mass praise and mass appreciation and recognition and all those other things was but a memory. It's interesting to note there are a couple of occasions where we have acts of mass praise where that wasn't the case. We might think of Job 38 and the sons of God rejoicing at creation. Or Luke chapter 2 and the angels, the heavenly host, informing the shepherds of Christ's birth. There we have mass communal praise where there was no falling away. And I, I don't know, I can't think of any other instances in scripture um, than, than, than those, but outside of visions anyway. But it's interesting because both of those occasions where we have a wholesome, fulsome praise that's not then... The, the, the participants don't then fall away from God. They're both associated with new creations, aren't they? They're both associated with a, with a new creation. And of course, there will be further instances of mass public praise, won't there? At that future creation, when the Lord returns. It features heavenly, doesn't it? Heavily in that kingdom age, when that new song is sung. In 1 Chronicles chapter 25, um, shortly after the ark was restored, David was setting about putting in place the sort of various orders and, and institutions. And as part of that, he established the office of the singers amongst the Levites. We saw how he gave the psalm in, 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 in 1 Chronicles 16 to, to Asaph. And Asaph was one of the um, houses that participated in this uh, office of, of singing. He was setting about, wasn't he, David, embedding praise into their worship. And it's just interesting, um, I, I, I'm not generally a fan of looking at the meanings of names and things, um, but I think there's possibly something to <coughs> reflect upon when we consider the individuals involved in, in this seemingly um, uh, irrelevant matter of detail. Because actually when we take those names of those individuals involved in instituting praise into their worship. We have David, meaning beloved. We have Asaph, meaning gatherer. We have Heman, meaning faithful. And Jaduthan, meaning praising. It's, it's the same word, that, that Yordor. And, and, and what do those sentiments express? Well, they express that the beloved of the Lord gathers together the faithful to praise him. That's what David was doing, wasn't it? In setting up praise and worship amongst the um, amongst the people he was gathering together the faithful to praise God and that's going to happen again isn't it when the Lord Jesus returns he's going to gather together the faithful to praise God later on in that chapter in in, in 1 Chronicles 25 we find that the the, the Levites are split into 24 orders and perhaps that casts our mind forward to Revelation where we have the 24 elders And in Revelation, we have that new song and those wonderful visions of of praise, don't we? Perhaps we can just close by reading um, one example of that. In Revelation chapter 7, this is what we hope for. The opportunity opportunity to be involved in praise amongst a community of like minded people with no risk or threat of our opportunity to praise God being withdrawn or affected by the flesh to be part of that gathering of the beloved who come together in faith to praise him revelation 7 and verse 9 after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts 
and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>